And when you move deeper into wants, um, you need ways to signal who am I, i.e. identity, and uh, 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 attract others. Um, NFTs are ways to attract and bring communities together. You're in the lab. All right, Lawson, man. Look, I'm super excited to officially welcome you to the Find Your Breakthrough podcast. There's going to be a lot of stuff that we talk about. But first, before we get into anything and give you a chance to introduce yourself, I want to say thank you because you guys have put together what I've experienced so far is the best, uh, could be the best podcast ever because you guys put together an NFT. You guys put together like a team, graphics, videos. You guys went over above <laughs> and beyond to honestly make this like a cool experience for myself and obviously everyone who's going to watch this in the future. So I want to thank you and I want to thank your entire team for doing that. Yeah, man. Um, it's, a, it's a wild world out on the internet these days <laughs> and uh, we're just trying to make it cooler and cooler to, to hang out uh, online. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Lawson. Friends call me L. Um, and uh, we are Rah Rah Social and we're working on um, uh, trying to accelerate people's ability to live, work, and play on the internet. And so kind of this experience, we're playing around with Rah Rah House and doing the, doing the Discord um, and the podcast uh, kind of as a collab is a good kind of representation of that. Um, and, uh, you know, we're working on some really cool tools um, uh, with our social wallet to really kind of create more deeper experiences um, in and around the social money and NFT space. And so uh, uh, excited to jam on it um, and excited to just kind of go from there, man. Absolutely. So before we dive into too far ahead, can you give me some insight into just yourself as whether you call yourself an entrepreneur or a creator, maybe there's a few different things, like what's some of your background that led you into Rara? Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I, you know, when I was a kid, I was like obsessed with the stock market, uh, you know, had this dream of being an investment banker for no particular reason besides, it, I guess it sounded cool and, you know, you see what you, whatever you saw on TV and decided to, to go kind of a backdoor route to investment banking to go into law school. Um, uh, planning never to practice and, uh, fall 2008 was like my second year, first semester of law school. And we, uh, that was basically the craziest time in the stock market ever. Um, I think I was trading more than I was paying attention to, to class. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, when I came out of law school, it was, uh, you know, 2010, it was kind of the, the second worst year to get into law, uh, uh, investment banking probably behind 2000. Uh, nine, um, but got lucky um, and uh, got a job at investment bank uh, with one of their law firms, and then eventually the investment bank. Uh, it basically originated fixed income and bonds and leases. Um, very boring stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, essentially, debt for governments and tax exempt entities. Um, and uh, governments move incredibly slow. And was from a family of of of, of uh, entrepreneurs. I, you know, we call them founders today, but you know, my dad had. Uh, multiple businesses, a restaurant, uh, he had an investment bank, uh, he had an insurance company, my brothers had companies as well. And, and so, you know, really felt like I was working what was essentially equity hours for paychecks and bonuses. Um, you know, most companies, um, especially who people who don't work in tech, their, their upside is just a, a bigger paycheck and maybe a bonus at the end of a quarter over a year. Um, and, and startups kind of changed that game. Um, and so, um, I uh, uh, ended up joining as part of the founding team of Synapse FI, which was the first banking API um, company in the U.S. And API is, stands for Application Protocol Interface. Basically, it's a way for um, people to write software to easily interact with other software. In our case, um, the software they were interacting with was a bank. Um, we were basically operationalizing and, and um, um, uh, uh, making a lot of the things banks do programmatic. While on the other side, our customers at the very beginning were crypto exchanges and crypto apps. And so this was like 2016, you know, 20, actually 2014 is when we had our first exchange, crypto exchange was our first customer um, through 2016, 2017. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we eventually grew into more traditional fintech and banking customers, but we, we really started in crypto. Um, and, you know, uh, PayPal, uh, you know, they started in porn um, and Synapse started in crypto is what we used to always say. Um, and as a result, uh, you know, I kind of had like one foot in, in fintech and like the future of like banking and like traditional finance. Um, the APIs were, were an incredibly powerful thing. And, and uh, if you're familiar with Stripe and companies like that, we were basically um, uh, helping iterate on that in the context of, of what the banks do, different from what debit, debit cards and credit cards do. 
Um, and then the other foot was in this very weird thing, this, this, this crypto thing um, uh, with exchanges and apps and, and all sorts of um, uh, really cool startups that um, for me were doing, you know, much, they were, the, the, the changes and the innovation they were trying to do were, were much more zero to one, like brand new type of ideas. Um, while the fintech customers were very constrained by like what the banking infrastructure could do and what the bank said they could do. Um, the crypto companies were, were just much different. Um, and so I, rec- I left there in 2018 um, to uh, join Tokensoft. Tokensoft was basically building and emulating financial assets on blockchains um, uh, and it's predominantly building on Ethereum. Um, and we were helping with a variety of token sales as well. Um, Hedera, Hashgraph, Handshake, Keep, Thesis, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, over that time frame, you know, basically just kept falling deeper and deeper down the crypto rabbit holes. Uh, essentially two B2B SaaS type companies right. um, that were changing infrastructure way money works, right? Um, meanwhile, you know, crypto had spent 10 years um, building, um, building out the tech, um, uh, continuing to iterate on the experience, um, and was, was trying desperately to, in my opinion, kind of break out of this very niche, pretty technical, um, you know, engineers only or people who are willing to spend a lot, a lot of time to learn what seed phrases are or to, to, to actually set up and use the stuff. Um, and it, it felt like for me in, in 2020, um, when I left Tokensoft, that it was time to go out towards consumers. Um, and uh, effectively, what the kind of trend I was observing that was most interesting to me is like um, uh, uh, the, the internet basically made all information free. And so we're, 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 we're sitting in the information age today. Um, uh, anything you want from a knowledge standpoint, from a media standpoint, songs, music, videos, um, you can, if you try, um, get it for free on the internet. And that's been incredibly powerful. That's like, that's created entire new economies around internet companies and basically passing around information. Um, uh, but the feeling is um, we're essentially moving out of the information age. Um, and crypto is, is, is part of that narrative in the same way that creators and influencers are part of that narrative. Um, uh, and we're moving into this economy that's closer to um, an economy based on um, connections and engagement and, um, uh, and influence. Um, and in that economy, um, uh, the relationship with the money, the stuff we were, I was working on at Synapse and the stuff I was working on at, at, at Tokensoft is changing. It's, it's less about the money and it's more about deeper connections with people online. Yes. Um, and, and that, that kind of understanding, that kind of nuance uh, led towards, you know, multiple types of iterations around what we were building with, um, uh, with what was Money Mail and now it's Rah Rah Social, um, which kind of gets us to today. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's uh, well, first of all, great context. And I appreciate because you seem to have a ton of experience in this space. So it makes sense why you're here. But now that you've kind of given the backstory and the context, explain exactly, you know, what is Rah Rah? What's the concept? And what is the, like, what do you guys want to build this out and achieve with it? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so rara.social is a social wallet and crypto experiences company. Um, uh, I, I believe and we believe that um, uh, people are only moving deeper into the internet um, and they're looking for uh, deeper experiences. Um, uh, you know, Clubhouse and even Discord audio is a really good example of that. Um, in, in the context of social, um, it, it, it primarily was... At first, it was, you know, like, let's say Facebook. Uh, I'm Lawson. I live in, in, you know, I'm from Memphis. I live, I live here. Um, I'm single or I'm not single. And eventually, like, post. Here is, here is a thought I have or here is a photo of something I've done. And people came to it. They came to it kind of like a, in an asynchronous-like way. Um, uh, they showed up on my little area of the world at some point, potentially when I was there, but likely they showed up there when I wasn't there. Um, and, and then we trended towards more photos and more videos and then, and then stories started happening, um, and Snapchat started happening. Um, and, and the speed at which you created the information and someone engaged with it started to increase. Mm -hmm. Um, and what was actually happening is we were basically heading towards going from asynchronous hanging out online to synchronous hanging out online. Clubhouse is synchronous hanging out online. Synchronous, like everybody's on audio 
Um, it's completely ephemeral. Um, you could record that audio, but the experience of being there is much deeper, is much different, is much more something people talk about. Like I was there when blank occurred. Um, uh, uh, and in, in, the, in, in that process, um, at Ra-Ra, we, we believe um, there's an incredible opportunity to uh, amplify the experiences in and around crypto. Again, um, uh, crypto, from a money standpoint, um, is very transactional in nature. Um, I have Ethereum. I want to buy your NFT. You know, I can just buy it from you, or maybe there's an auction experience. Um, uh, there's tons of great platforms that have created incredible auction experiences and have onboarded, you know, frankly, the best internet, the best artist in the world. Um, are on the uh, uh, foundations and Zoras and Open Seas and Nifties right now. Um, those are the best artists in the world, hands down. It's incredible what, to watch that. But the experience of being on those websites is kind of like going to an art gallery and not being able to allow to talk, not being able allowed to meet the artists, not being able to rub shoulders, um, and not being able to just watch the auction go down or or experience something around it. And, and, and that kind of observation is kind of what led to what Ra Ra Social is building right, what, built right now. Um, basically, we're, we're, we're building tools for communities in Telegrams and Discords to be able to run social NFT auctions directly in their communities. Um, and, and, and we're doing this because we effectively observed it. Um, there right. are tons, it's, it's, this is crazy, there are tons of Telegram groups, uh, private Telegram groups, sometimes, some cases, other times, open Telegram or Discord groups that are running um, auctions of NFTs all the time. It's completely trust-based, um, and it's completely manual. Um, uh, uh, if um, uh, 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 the moderators say, hey, guys, we're going to auction this item, um, the artist may or may not be in the room. They may type and talk about it, or they get on voice and they talk about it. Um, and, and then they start a bidding process. And people are just saying, I'll pay half an eighth for it. Right. Um, and the moderators just keeping track of, of the bids and either they have a time limit or eventually they say any more bids. If nobody responds, they close it down. And then after they close it down, the moderator then has this manual process of following up with a buyer and following up with a seller to say, hey, did you send him the ETH and did he send you the, <laughs> the art? Right, very tedious. Um, and, and, and the reality is they're willing, they're, they, they're willing to do that because these experiences are way cooler. Um, people, as these auctions are occurring, are... Um, throwing uh, 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 reactions and their emojis and gifs and making memes and maybe they're in voice, maybe they're like you know they're having it, they're experiencing this together. Um, and so um, what Rara's bot does um, is basically automates the auction process um, inside of Telegrams and Discords, um, and it does that with a combination of a tool for the communities, um, the Rara bot, um, which is installed, and a tool for the community members, um, the social wallet. Um, and so we'll get into it in a second, but basically we call it a social wallet because um, uh, it must definitely do the wallet stuff well. Um, I was actually kind of against including wallet in the descriptor name of it, um, but we, just, we decided to keep it because people needed to understand this thing holds money. Um, and, and the first thing it needs to do very well is bid uh, and buy NFTs and send money, right? Uh, but the first word is really the most important word, uh, uh, social wallet. Um, uh, uh, the reality is for all art and really pretty much all capital assets, um, uh, you know, uh, not everybody's going to bid on every piece of art. Um, and not everybody's going to ever be able to own a people, you know, 1% of the world owns, you know, really most of the wealth. And the yep. same is frankly, probably true for the best artwork. Right. Um, meanwhile, there's 99% of other people who are at these events who are art fans who are uh, uh, other artists, budding artists themselves, um, or, cur or curators that love art, they're just not buying that art. And so the Ra Ra Social Wallet, um, uh, we call ourselves Ra Ra because phonetically Ra Ra is a cheer from an individual. Um, and uh, if enough people Ra Ra is a brand new asset, it's a brand new reaction, it's a crowd effect of, of enjoyment. And so the, 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 the social part of the Ra Ra Wallet Today is the ability to earn and spend RAS in an, at events, um, and 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 where that effectively goes um, uh, is um, we're trying to find ways to activate every person at internet events 
to um, uh, give them ways to engage deeper, um, but also give them ways to, to earn money and spend money. Um, uh, and, and, and yeah, I'll kind of pause there. So there's probably kind of some questions or thoughts. Here. Yeah, I absolutely love it. You guys basically found a, a problem and you created a solution for it. And I think, you know, when I first heard of Rara, just for my context as someone who didn't know about it before this podcast, right. And I did a little bit digging. I was like, Oh, this is like really dope. These guys seem to be creating like yeah. literally like you said, social auctions for NFTs, but you're including the community. You're adding music, you're adding speakers and experience. And it's like, as a consumer, that makes everything so much better. It's very similar to what NBA Top Shot does where they have a podcast going live as you're waiting in line and different things are happening all over the place. So like if you're a consumer waiting, you can be engaged and have a lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah. I think you guys are onto something like very unique. And I want to even ask a further question is, can you just elaborate a little bit more? Not, not everyone who watches the podcast will be will uh, understand exactly what we're going on. So I'll ask you a few questions from this. But can you first elaborate a little bit more on the raw concept, getting raw and spending that? Yeah, yeah. So t today, I'll just be frank, raw is our database money. Um, they're really not redeemable for anything. Um, but in the future, raws will be tokens. Um, okay. And so um, what we're working on here is giving tools to communities to activate everyone in the community. Um, and in, do, in, in activating them in the community, um, uh, finding ways for some people to spend and some people to earn, um, essentially an economy, like communities around engagement. Okay. Um, and so let's just take uh, social NFT auctions are just our go to market. It's just where we're starting. There are tons of other opportunities in crypto for social experiences. But in the context of a, a uh, NFT auction, um, the, there's, there's the, the obvious um, uh, opportunity to get people paid is ba basically helping the auction be better, higher sales, more people there, things like that. Um, and so um, uh, uh, most of these communities that run these auctions are taking commissions right now, and most of them are just doing that um, completely manual again, um, and they either take it as like a pool of money for the entire community to buy more art or do something with, um, uh, or, you know, some of them even have, um, community tokens and they're, you know, heading towards DAOs and they're using that cash to make this DAO more valuable and the token of the community more valuable. And so the, and so the, the very, the very first potential cash flow that we could kind of play with is essentially commissions on, on, um, auction sales. Um, and so again, in a very, very simple framework, if, if, if I were to share, if I'm at an auction and I'm a person in the crowd. And um, um, I were to share a link for someone to come to this auction and they ended up coming in and spending, maybe bidding or winning a piece of art, um, then, then I probably should get some sort of marketing, marketing cut, right? Right. Um, the, 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 you know, white collar job is I was a marketer. Um, I did something to market something and you're paying me for marketing activities. Um, this, this is software and this is crypto. Like we can actually automate a lot of those things. And, and specifically because it's crypto, we can start playing with, um, uh, you know, fractions, fractions, amounts of money. Um, and so um, a, a very easy example of, of, of where eventual cash flow comes from um, to help people earn is sharing the commissions with other people who help make these the auctions successful. In the context of Roz, mm -hmm. um, that's a little bit something different. Um, the, the Roz, the reaction, the, raw, the reaction of the Ra is, is Ra is our community token today. Um, most of the most interesting communities like FWB or RNG or Whale um, uh, are great Discord or Telegram communities that are always looking for ways to uh, uh, both reward um, uh, good activity um, and give them ways to use their tokens. Um, today, a lot of those tokens are used predominantly to like gate access to Telegrams or Discords. In the future, those will be used in other types of ways that um, will feel a little bit like micro-tipping or... Um, uh, uh, um, uh, just saying like, hey, thanks, thanks for that. Like here's right. some RNG token. Um, Raz are an example of like what that could be like in the future in, in, in certain communities. Um, it is, is a little bit of kind of the idea of where that goes. Does that make sense? No, no, it, it, it does make sense. And yeah, my head, my, head's, my head is almost like a, it's just spinning with different... Uh, concepts ideas and questions and things like well, that and I, and I love it yeah 
I'll, I'll take I'll take it even a little bit deeper. So so sure. we're actually, we're also this this is going to take it a little bit slightly different direction. Um, uh, uh, Ra's are a reaction, right? Um, in, inside of the um, uh, crypto space, um, uh, every asset that exists in in cryptocurrencies on blockchains are predominantly capital assets. Um, capital assets uh, uh, from a you know from an uh, you know economic and finance standpoint are like things that you um, hold for long periods of time. Um, and generally, those capital assets um, uh, are, are the, the name of the game is buy high, sorry, buy low, sell high. Um, um, but looking at actual economies, um, most uh, economies um, consist of a whole bunch of other assets. So 20% of the US GDP is capital investments, and the other 80% are things like consumables and other types of things that people interact with every day. And so the, the, the one, one thought we're playing with with Ross is essentially crypto consumables, which is kind of the opposite end of the spectrum of, of a crypto, crypto asset today. And so I, I'll give you another example. Um, um, if you were to create uh, uh, the Facebook heart, um, uh, that could be an NFT. If you're on Zora, people actually were uh, uh, tokenizing um, emojis. Um, and um, you could own that heart. But the reality is, if you own that heart, you kind of want to make some money off of it. Um, and in, in, in most music industries and, and MBA, like the, the way uh, most, the most of the money is made off of most, um, especially cultural assets, is royalties. So music, um, video, um, people are always paying licensing fees to access and use and consume um, the media, right? Um, if you're going to listen to a song on Spotify, Spotify has to pay the artists, right? Right. Um, but somebody owns that piece of media. Today, NFTs are just the ownership of the media. Um, they're missing the royalty cash flows. And so one of the concepts we're, we're working on specifically um, with our social wallet, because we're trying to trend the social wallet towards a social protocol, is this idea of cons crypto consumables which essentially are like a wrapper for NFTs. You can mint and own a specific piece of media, sound, image, animation, maybe a combination of all, all three. Um, uh, 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 but you need to give people ways to use it provably and make money off of it. And so RAS are actually right. a really good example of that. Um, uh, the way RAS work today is it's, it just, um, uh, you, 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 when you hit the button, when you hit the raw button, um, it's actually sending RAS to the art, to the, in, to the NFT owner um, that, of the NFT that's up for sale. Um, and, and then in the crowd, in, in the Discord, you're, you'll see a bunch of RAS being tossed in the Discord. And you'll see who's sending it, right? Okay, that, um, that's cool, yeah. Yeah, and so, and so that's just like a, uh, that's just a use of, of one type of raw. But um, it, very similar to emojis, um, it's, we're playing around with the idea and we're working with some sound designers to create lots of different types of RAWs. Um, so RAW is a sound, right? Um, I think the internet's a pretty quiet place. And when you're in RAW RAW house, um, it's unfortunate we don't have music playing right now, but <laughs> normally we have sound. Sound's right. really important to our experience. And so, um, uh, you know, what if you could um, select the sound of your RAW the same way you select an emoji we relate to? Um, like I, I tend to use the David Bowie emoji. Um, and I always, I always use the like super yellow one, but like you can also, you know, tonality, like people choose emojis based off of the ones they relate to also in a, in the context of the type of emotion they're trying to emote. Um, and so, uh, what are the ideas we have with Roz is what if sound designers could, uh, mint, um, uh, uh, um, a, a male raw, a female raw, uh, uh, right. uh, a bass, uh, a, a tenor, like all these different sounds around Roz and, and maybe even some comedic ones instead of raw it was raw and 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 what if you could consume some of that at an event what if you could um use that to react um and 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 we're and what we're doing what we're playing with there is is we're playing with the stuff we the, the stuff we were just talking about at the very beginning um experiences things that make it more exciting to connect and engage online um uh Part of doing that, what makes it exciting to connect and engage is um, being able to emote and express yourself, something that's specific to you. Um, so inside of the NFT space, you're seeing a lot of like uh, identity-related assets like CryptoPunks yep. um, and things like that, right? 
Um, in, in the same way, uh, you probably want a specific sound, right? Um, and so uh, in, in, in that, um, we're playing with A, people's ability to give a specific sound, um, uh, but also um, uh, uh, express different emotions. Um, and then in the concept of crypto consumables, uh, the person who made that specific sound could get a portion of the cash flow from consumption of, of that raw in, a, in, in the same way that the artist or the, the art owner who got the raws sent to them would make a little money. Um, there would be a little royalty stream to the NFT creator of that first raw. They still own it, or maybe a new, maybe the, right. the, the secondary purchaser owns it. Of it, owns it. Um, but they need ways to make royalties of use, and yeah. so crypto consumables basically are 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 playing with the idea of provable cryptographic use. It's either number of times use. You could literally buy a pack and you could use it fifty times. And any time you did made fifty interactions with it on on a blockchain, um, uh, then you'd be out. Um, or it could be a common, some sort of formula that includes usage and time um, uh, and, and playing with all sorts of other variables as well. Um, uh, and so that, that raw button, uh, 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 all of that, I say all that to basically say that raw button that you're going to see in a little bit and get to play with a little bit is playing with lots of different ideas. Um, uh, and and it's, it's frankly um, where most of our, I think, our innovation is going to lie. Um, Absolutely. I, you guys seem you guys seem like super early on this, but almost like game changers, like trendsetters in terms of uh, the way you guys are thinking and potentially moving. Uh, I've never seen, I've never per- talked to anyone with the kind of mindset and the kind of some of the ideas you guys are bringing up. So I love to see that there's innovation happening. And yeah, then you guys yeah. are just being like, hey, let's let's experiment. Let's see what is going to yeah. be yeah. Uh, the best yeah. thing. To, 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 yeah, today the, the concept's very simple. Let's make auctions online yes. fun and social. Um, yeah. But where it goes, there's there's tons of opportunities here and we're super excited about uh, trying to make it happen. Absolutely. So let's take this back a little bit. And I, I wish I did this earlier because I think you have, you're going to have some great answers for this. But I always ask my guests when they're in the crypto or blockchain space, NFTs, et cetera, like describe, because we have a, lot, a huge user base who is, they're thinking about, they're on the line, right? Like, hey, what's an NFT? What's a social coin? What do, When do we dive in? So can mm. you first just start with NFTs and just give your explanation of what an nft is and why there's value in this long term okay there we go so this is a photo of 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 my wife and i right yeah um uh today on the internet if i were to send you this photo you would have a copy and i would have a copy right um and that's basically been true this is where i this is where i began with the idea of the information age um, uh, it, it's been impossible for me to just own the photo. Um, uh, with, with Bitcoin, for the first time ever, you could provably say, I own this thing. Um, you have a copy. And the same thing is true with NFTs. Um, NFTs basically um, help um, point towards ownership of some sort of media, media, uh, uh, video, image, song, um, uh, uh, um, animation, 3D object, whatever. Um, it, it, NFTs... Um, uh, give people socially ways to know who actually owns something. And I say socially because that's the really important part, right? Um, uh, people can still copy this photo. People can right. still copy the people. And they, and they will, they do. Um, uh, the difference is um, uh, 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 we now can provably say who owns it. And there is social status in provable ownership, right? Yes. Um, uh, y- anybody can have a... A, a copy of the Mona Lisa on their wall, but everybody knows 99% of the people, they, they actually don't own the Mona Lisa. It's in a, it's in a museum somewhere. Um, and that person who owns it um, likes to be able to say they own it. Um, NFTs are the exact same. Um, uh, it's about being able to socially signal that I own this piece of content, song, image, animation, something that's very cool that an artist has made. And in, in your opinion... Why does this give someone, why does this provide long-term value? Why is NFTs going to be around for 5, 10, 20, the next 20 years and continue to grow? Uh, it's, it's purely social reasons. Um, again, the, 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 the narrative of, of rah-rah and what I'm most excited about is we're, we're leaving the information age where everything is purely transactional. Here's my money, you give me service towards... Um, uh, this very social status engagement 
influence, um, deeper engagement, um, uh, finding deeper ways to connect. Um, uh, when people uh, uh, do that, um, they're, they're looking for, there's always, a, there's always signaling in money. Money always includes signaling. Money is a utility, but there's always signaling. So that, you know, the, the, the narrative I used to give um, uh, you know, way back when I was fundraising, um, when money moved online, it lost all of its signaling capabilities. Um, you know, uh, mo- most recently we had paper, paper money. Um, and um, when you spent it, the utility was, here's my, here's my money. Um, but uh, th- it was actually a lot different experience for, for some people. Um, for example, spending a crisp $100 bill is very different from spending a crinkly $5 bill, right? Um, and, and the reason that that's true is because, like, um, A, it's, it's crisp, it's a higher one, um, but also the, the experience of spending the money is very um, uh, uh, social in itself. It's got your home team on it, your country, yep. somebody you saw in history class on it, um, and there's something very tactile and, like, experiential to it. When we moved to debit cards and credit cards, they actually amplified that a whole lot. Um, first, it was just like a red card because it was Bank of America. Um, but then we started playing with status games, right. silver card, gold card, platinum card, one card that's a lot heavier than the other cards, yeah. right? Um, it's not heavier because it spins better. <laughs> uh, it's heavier because you're trying to say something when you spend it. Absolutely. Right? Um, when we went online... Um, uh, the money was just a whole bunch of digits of, of uh, expiration dates and credit card numbers and, and billing addresses. Um, and so we really lost this ability to like signal when I'm spending and what I'm doing with it. Um, we lost this ability to flex. Like why do you have, why do I have a, uh, well, like why, do you, why would you have a, a Rolex versus a, a t- like a, a $5 Timex? Right. Um, each of those are a signal to somebody um, and in the same way, it gives you a specific experience. The utility is both of them is a clock, um, but there is a signaling uh, uh, desire with most objects, in, especially in, in second and third world countries. We move beyond uh, needs to wants. And when you move deeper into wants, um, you need ways to signal who am I, i.e. identity, and uh, 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 attract others. Um, NFTs are ways to attract and bring communities together. Um, they are attractants to people with common interest and common likes. Um, uh, uh, they will be ways to flirt. They will be way, they will be all, it's, it's, all, it's all a social game. Um, but the difference is this social game is, is, de- is I say, deep internet. It is, it is what our lives are today. The, the younger you are, the more portion of your life you spend only online. Um, and, and that, that only is accelerating. Um, again, first it was on these static, like flat websites. Um, and then, um, it was, um, we're, we're all leaving the Facebooks of the world and the, and the Reddits of the world. And we're jumping into all of these telegrams and discords, um, and crypto, you know, uh, we're the worst. We always want to find it even a deeper version of the internet. So we have crypto voxels and Decentraland, <laughs> um, which are like these, um, virtual worlds that you can, uh, create an identity and buy fashion for, and then buy a lot of land and build a museum and put up your uh, up your uh, your crypto punk or your your people or whatever piece of art you have. You're doing that because you want to create an experience for other people, but you're you're also you're you're emoting, you're expressing yourself, and you're giving ways to people yes. to know how to relate to you and vice versa. Like, who do I want to relate to is signaled by what do they like. And in the context of, of NFTs, um, what do you think is cool? It's culture. It's, it's, it's completely social. It's completely cultural in nature. I love it, man. You're extremely articulate and well-spoken, so I appreciate this conversation. You're giving <laughs> not, not only to me to learn, but like to the viewers that are going to learn a lot from this. And I want yeah. to continue just to ask you a couple more things about NFTs. Uh, first thing is, obviously, in the last couple of months, it's just been a wild world, right? NFTs have blown up people, and there's been a ton of other examples of people just cashing out and, and doing crazy things in the NFT world. Are we in an NFT bubble? It, it's, it's tough to describe bubble in the context of cultural movements. Um, I, think, I think we have ebbs and flows. Um, I think 2017, um, uh, what 2017 did to every other token after Bitcoin and Ethereum 
um, uh, um, is basically say, we have all these great ideas, uh, but we, we didn't know how to actually implement them at the time. We just know how to sell. We, we all, the innovation in 2017 was basically crowd sales that you know, nobody could stop. Um, and then in 2020, we, we started getting, D, like DeFi really became a thing. DeFi means decentralized finance. And we started creating all of these really cool frameworks of, of smart contracts that could find innovative ways to give people access to loans or leverage um, or interest on, interest on, on, on uh, stable coins or assets they own. In the context of, of NFTs, um, they're actually benefiting from all of that learning from the DeFi financial tokens, the money, the money assets of crypto, um, in that um, the innovation that's occurring at the, at the, at the NFT level is, is at a much faster rate than the 2017 token. Right. Um, we're taking everything we learned from there and immediately strapping it on top of NFTs. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, the one that I'm most excited about is, is this idea of programmatic art. Um, uh, and, 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 and why that one's the most exciting to me is because it is the closest parallel to DeFi. Um, inside of DeFi, what, we, what, what, what developers and what teams love to do is create something once that is an incredible primitive that creates value that others can build on top of, um, and so uh, Uniswap is on the uh, is on is is a is a, an important layer to lots of other things like I don't know Yearn or something like that. Yearn is a, a deal where you can um, earn interest and 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 farm and 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 make money inside of DeFi. Um, all of these DeFi tools are like Legos to create new financial primitives, new financial opportunities, and in the same way, um, uh, programmatic art and NFTs. Um, uh, is, is already starting to kind of happen. Um, uh, I was actually talking to a, a girl um, two days ago um, uh, uh, who's working on basically texture NFTs. Um, and she's working on texture NFTs because she's interested in fashion NFTs. Um, and so what that means is you could own, this is a shark print, <laughs> um, you could own this texture. That's interesting. And then you could use it on other things. You could use it on a shirt inside of crypto voxels, or you could put it on your wall in 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 uh, yeah, a crypto yeah. voxels library, um, or you could combine it with a whole bunch of other entities, which is actually what's happening there. If you own the shirt, um, the shirt is the is the object. You could also layer these things um, to create new things. Um, and 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 uh, right now that's super basic in how we're doing that, um, uh, but um, uh, in the future, programmatic art. Um, won't just be layered by humans um, manually. It will be layered by hum humans who are developers and artists. Yes. Uh, so engineers and artists are, gonna, are, are already becoming one and, and they're only going to be deeper. Um, some of the probably coolest art that I've seen this year um, has been created with software. Um, uh, and, and that's not just like, you know, moving Adobe Photoshop around, like it's actual software that is manipulating and combining things, right? Um, and, and so, um, back to the original question, like, are we in a bubble of NFTs? Um, uh, um, we're in a, uh, a, a large wave of many more large waves. Um, yeah, at agree. some point we got to breathe, but we're only going further. Yeah. We're only going deeper. We're, but, we're uh, for surely just at the brink of, you know, what is going to come in the next few years. And it's going to be exciting to see everything roll out. Um, and you just touched on this a little bit. So I want to ask you about it too, is, you know, there's companies like genies coming out of a heavy focus on digital avatars and they're getting all these big celebrities to join in and then tying that even yep. further into something you just said is the whole concept of digital land and, you know, it's super interesting to me. And basically you, you touched on, you hit on the head just now where it's like over time, we're going to be buying things and trying to set things up in this digital universe where fans could come see it or our family members could come interact. And like you said, it's, it's an emotional expression of something that maybe we couldn't have created in the physical world. So the question I want to ask you is, you know, what's your thoughts on all these things coming up? And do you think something like Genie's creating digital avatars and then connecting that to digital land, is that like where we're actually headed and where you're yeah. going to start seeing people build? Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
Um, Genius is super cool. It actually used to be super close to what we were originally working on um, when we were called Money Mail. Um, okay. uh, when we were called Money Mail, we were, again, we, in a very similar way to Ra Ra, we were working on ways for fans to emote and that emoting inside of social experiences right. being money. Um, and, and the analogy of that is, um, and the analogy of, of, of Genies is video games have been doing this forever, right? Um, uh, you can have an identity and you can uh, have some things that are rare goods that last forever that you found or you bought, um, uh, and, and that's Genies. Um, uh, uh, and then you can also have these other things that you consume, uh, health, um, uh, shields, um, uh, bullets, like or whatever the type of the video game was. Um, that's that's fashion. Um, that's the, that's the that's the that's the identity portion. That's the consumable portion of genies. Um, while um, uh, the other types of goods of consumption and and connection are a little bit what like like Ra Ra is working on. Um, and so, in the context of of people's desire to be able to. Um, uh, express their identity online, it's incredibly important. Again, the Facebook example. First, I had my name and then I, I uploaded the photo, um, right? Yep. And then I had this, like, I had deeper versions, video content versions of, of me. Um, uh, but, and, and, but then, you know, we're, we're only seeing a growing class of um, pseudonyms or anons. Um, uh, that's not because every one of them wants to be anonymous. Some of them just want to express themselves in a different way than they look. Um, and, you know, again, the, the, the internet is, is, is actually an incredible tool for people who, who don't fit into, um, the people culturally who are geographically around them. Right. Um, it gives them opportunity to reach people they culturally relate to anywhere in the world. And in the process, um, say who I am. Ident uh, identity and genies is, a, is an incredible way for someone to be able to say who I am on the internet um, in, in ways that like a photo don't do justice or even like yeah. an image that they were going to create to do justice. Um, Absolutely. And then in the, in the context of, of, of land, yes. Uh, again, like um, anybody can deploy a token to Ethereum. Anybody can create a cryptocurrency. The ones that are valuable, valuable, or the ones that um, create um, um, cultural experiences. The same is true for LAN. Like anybody can deploy um, a, a new tools for uh, new land. Like they can have their own version of Decentraland. Um, but the stuff that will be valuable is the stuff that people experience the most. Like. Where is the New York City of Decentraland? Um, uh, and, and, and like how you would define that is like, right. where is the commerce? Where is the culture? Um, and so CryptoVox was again, Decentraland um, has so much culture right now. There's so many cool things happening there. Like um, uh, people are, are, are both displaying their art and renting space on walls to advertise, right? Right. Um, and like, again, like, um, you know, uh, how do you identify which ones will be popular um, uh, or sorry, which ones will be valuable? Um, uh, it's, 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 it's always, it's, it's always going to be this cultural type of thing. Like where is the culture? Where is the experience? Um, Absolutely. And, and like some endless opportunity there. Super excited um, about what's happening in, in, in the central lands of the world. Um, I even have kind of a rabbit hole idea of, of one of the, the potential next steps for the social wallet. Um, uh, uh, that's that I can get into later, but uh, <laughs> basically I call it game mode. Right now, the social wallet starts off like this, and like you're, you're. Yeah. Um, we like to say it's the analogy is the social wallet is kind of like a joystick um, with a wallet. Um, the Discord or the Telegram are for your eyeballs, um, kind of like the TV when you're playing your Sega or Nintendo were for the eyes, oh, okay. but the remote was for your hands. Um, and so today in that analogy, um, it's all like this. And the way I'm reacting is I'm in a Telegram or Discord. But in the future, um, uh, that could very easily be uh, a crypto voxels. Um, and um, instead of being like this, you turn, you turn it like this. And, and now I can walk around the screen inside of this digital world um, with my, my phone. But more importantly, it's not just, it's not just a mouse pad, not just a joystick. It's got the wallet natively in it. 
meaning I'm taking my identity mm -hmm. everywhere I go and I'm taking my ability to spend everywhere I go. Um, and so as I walk through this crypto voxel world, um, uh, I can have a deeper way to engage with my hand um, and um, I can uh, react to content maybe with Ross. I can um, uh, 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 pay, I can buy a, a, a token uh, that gives me access to this room. Um, uh, and, but all of that has to be as close as possible to where you want to experience it, the hands. And so one of the ideas of where the social wallet of the future goes is, is basically what I call game mode to be able to get deeper into those worlds um, with your wallet. Absolutely. Man, I love it. I, I love where you're thinking. I'm locked in on everything you said. So it's, it's always great meeting other people who are passionate about the space and like you're obviously just a step, a step ahead. Um, before we dive into the whole Rara social token experience and like exactly what you guys are doing, because I know you created a whole NFT for me and everything. I want one more question for you. I just want to get your opinion on it. Um, so I'm, I'm super bullish on social coins, um, especially for creators and, you know, brands like in the lab, like ourselves, like we're exploring right now, partnering with rally roll, whoever it's going to be and bringing our social coin to life. And, and it goes back to kind of what you said with Rara is like our goal within the lab is to build an engaged community and it's all for rewards, not for us to make money It's to just add that extra layer of like, Hey, this is how you can engage, how to get rewards and grow with us. What's your thoughts on social coins? Hundred percent. They they uh, uh, they are they're they're going to be a thing. They are a thing. Um, uh, there's tons of incredible communities um, that I'm a part of that uh, I've both bought because I think they're they have incredible upside, but also just okay. because they are cultural centers of the internet. Again, FWB, RNG um, uh, uh, are, are good examples of that. Uh, My token. Um, uh, 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 whale. There's a number of other really cool ones as well. Yeah. Um, again, we're called a social wallet for a reason. Um, in the context of, of, of crypto experiences and social experiences, um, there are essentially like a few things that matter. Um, individuals, communities, and content. Personal tokens, community tokens, and NFTs. Um, the social, uh, the Rara social wallet must interact and engage with all of those things. Right. And so um, I, the, 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 the bigger vision of the, of the Ra Ra social wallet is to be able to throw cash flow between all of those things, make all of those people some, some money and make the experience cooler and fun and, 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 and fun. Right. Um, and so again, back to that, 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 that uh, NFT commission cash flow scenario, um, what we want all of our communities ideally to do is ideally they're all, they all have a community token and ideally they all are a DAO. Um, and as a result, um, the Rara social wallet can find ways to throw cash at them. Um, very basic cash could be the commissions, but there's all sorts of event-related cash flow activity that could occur as well. Um, uh, uh, I, I, you know, uh, again, the uh, not analogy I give, for example, you could sell tickets, token tickets, to get into an event. Um, today, community tokens and personal tokens are primarily being used to access um, uh, communities, which I think is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you, you know who cares because they paid to join um, and you know who stopped caring. They sold it. They got rid of the token, right? Um, and it, 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 it gates for you. And so uh, 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 Collab Land and Alti and a few other yeah. groups have created tools to um, manage the gating of that um, Telegram and Discord groups and, and WhatsApp with Alti. Um, the... Um, uh, that's very powerful, but the next thing after gating is like finding ways to get this token to be used and 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 give um, uh, give this token value. Um, today, Whale and FWB are trying to give those tokens value um, through ownership of art NFTs. So, Whale token was created by a, an NFT collector who um, created the DAO and then gave away and sold all the tokens um, of ownership of all of these NFTs. And so he started first with the art and then he became a DAO. While FWB and RNG and groups like that um, started with a community token and then started both acqu acquiring, um, Flamingo is another good example of this, acquiring um, NFTs and art, um, or um, the most interesting ones, um, get the community to create the art to be owned right. by the right. DAO and then obviously sold off and made money for the entire community, right? Um, and so that's a very asset-based, um, capital asset way to make the community community money. 
Um, uh, some of the, again, the, the more interesting, um, or not more interesting, this is the stuff that I'm most interested in, is these um, one-time use consumable ways to give value to community tokens and personal tokens. Uh, again, the raw consumption is a good example of that. Ticket sales to an event are a good example of that. The ticket sale could give access to the Ra Ra house room um, at a single point in time for people to come to one auction. And that's really cool because um, people love, um, people love you know, kind of paying for things that are exclusive. If there's only 100 tickets to the event yes. and uh, an awesome DJ is playing or uh, uh, a, a very exclusive Beeple is going to be sold, um, people who want access to buy the people or who want to hear, who want to say I was there at uh, the Travis Scott experience, you know, um, inside of Fortnite, um, uh, to be able to say you were there and actually experience it, you need to be there. So you'll, you're willing to buy that ticket. And so the first thing it does is gate access just like tickets does. But this is crypto. Um, there's money being thrown a while. The ticket could also be uh, effectively an event-based DAO that is um, an investable opportunity. Right. Um, again, that we're throwing these events throw off cash flow. Um, the first cash flow from a ticket sales standpoint is is money in from ticket sales. The other cash flow is commissions um, or maybe bar sales. Like, did you sell you know booze and stuff at the, at the event? Um, Raz are a good exa- are, are an- another analogy for Raz or crypto consumables is basically the bar, um, while the NFTs is is like the concert. It's like the it's it's like the 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 artist and the, and the ticket sales is the door. The ticket, the token right. ticket, is the door, the door guy, um, and so um, I say all that to basically say there's an incredible opportunity for um, uh, community tokens and personal tokens to have value. Um, I think they are probably, honestly, a little bit earlier than um, I think they still have a whole lot of growing up to do, more so than even NFTs, personally. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I think the way those tokens are distributed and sold and or earned um, uh, lack a lot of nuance and like critical thinking. Um, traditionally, the way you get most of these tokens is you go buy them off Uniswap, um, which is cool because anybody can get access to them and they're always for sale. And the price in the market, the Uniswap helps find the correct price for it. Um, uh, but, um, you know, best communities aren't just about the money. It's about like who's here and did they earn, did they really earn it to be here? Um, and some of those people um, really do need to earn it. They can't buy it. Um, and so I think, I think there's a lot of growing up to still occur with community tokens and personal tokens. Um, uh, I, you know, I think, again, the role hack is a good example of, you know, um, uh, we haven't really thought through a lot of these things as much as we probably should, even though I love role. I love, I love role and rally. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, super excited about them. Um, the Rara social wallet will look for ways to frankly make them make money and be a whole lot, again, a cooler experience. Yeah. I love it, man. And so let's use that as a transition to, and I can share my screen here if that makes you know, the most sense. Let's transition yeah. into, and let's show everyone exactly what Rara is and like what it does. Yeah. So I'll, um, I'll go ahead and share mine. Cause I think that's probably maybe the easiest thing to do. Yeah. So if you, uh, why don't you, uh, um, make that screen, uh, just me- sque- squeeze it down to the, the width of the, just the, um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and this? then pull up the discord right next to it. Got you. Got you. Got you. Let's do that. So, uh, right now it's just a web app, um, meaning it, it can work, uh, incredibly well and very easily with, um, uh, uh, uh somebody who's on their desktop, um, or somebody who's, um, on their mobile. Um, what we've what we found, especially in crypto, is many times people are at crypto events and experiencing crypto on their desktop. Um, the reason they're experiencing it on their desktop is a few reasons. Um, a, it's COVID right now. Everyone's in front of a computer, and it's it's a bigger screen. Um, uh, uh, B, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, Apple has a whole lot of restrictions over what you could do with in-app browsers and inside of mobile apps, and as a result, uh, most crypto experiences again are are desktop based. Um, and, and, and so what we're, what we're, we're gearing this towards is definitely, um, it's the best, it's, it's, it's the coolest experience on, on, on mobile. Um, but it, it works completely fine, um, with desktop as well. Cool. And, and the idea is, um, again, the Ra Ra social wallet is for the, um, is for the, uh, 
your hands while the discord is for your eyes and ears. Right. And so if you scroll down to the alpha raw uh, channel below club VIPs yep. and everybody who's in the crowd, I'd love for you to do this as well in Ra Ra house. Um, if you don't have permissions to alpha raw and the club VIPs, just DM uh, Azim and he can hook you up. Um, and, and the way it works is um, uh, everyone in the crowd types launch Ra Ra to set up their wallet. Um, uh, Nob, you've, you've already, oh, done already that, done so this. you should be yeah. good to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we'll get everybody else to get set up here as well. Um, That's cool. So I see Kennedy in there. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's Kennedy. What's up, babe? That's my wife. Uh-huh, there we go. Of, I'll, I'll, there you go. Biggest supporter of the all. Um, I didn't know she was going to make it. I'm excited she's here, though. <laughs> um, uh, and and um, yeah, so let me get this up as well. So just very like basic levels for everyone understanding. You you hit up this channel. You click launch rah rah. You obviously get the message from the bot. It sends you to the screen I'm currently on right now, which will allow you to participate in the auction. Correct. Exactly. Okay. And so, what's super important with us is um, everybody in the crowd. Um, we want to we want to get activated. Um, meaning, if you don't have any crypto, you can still use the Rara social wallet. You can still earn and spend in the Rara social wallet um, because we want we want to, people need to be baby stepped into crypto, right? Um, uh, which is different from maybe somebody like like you or me who's um, already. Um, uh, uh, you know, maybe minted an NFT, you know, purchased some Ethereum, they have their own wallet. Um, and so the idea is we want to give everybody the ability to be up and ready to go um, and, and be able to spend at least with bras to start. Um, but um, uh, this tool is for, is the way it's, it's integrated today is, is moderators um, uh, actually integrate this into Telegram to Discords. Um, again, to allow them to throw auctions. And so uh, let's um, uh, kick off an auction. I'm really excited to see how this, this all plays out and works. Okay, cool. So it's already live. Yep. And so let me jump over to your screen again, make sure you're good. Um, yeah, so you see here. Okay, there you Sweet. go. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and so what you're looking at here is a very basic... Um, uh, you know, the, the analogy I use it is it's, it's, it's a little bit more social than the gallery experience. Um, it's a very basic UI that we built to basically prove out this concept um, that um, social NFT auctions are a thing. Um, and, and so the, um, uh, 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 um, we're actually going to be upgrading this to, to be a really cool, and I'll, maybe if we have time at the end, I'll kind of briefly show that to you. Um, uh, an, an updated interface. But, the, but, but the, what the wallet does right now is it allows for people in the crowd to bid. So uh, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to bid. Sweet. So I could literally come in here and bid. Okay. It's just that easy, yeah. huh? This is, this yeah, yeah. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, and so um, what you're seeing here is, um, uh, uh, you know, everybody in the crowd, you're seeing both in the Discord so anybody casually walk, watching, they can watch this auction. They don't have to have the wallet open. They can just see who's the highest bidder and kind of what's going on. Um, uh, you know, in these communities, again, like it's likely that the artist or the seller is going to be up here talking about the art. Um, right. Mick, Mick couldn't make it. Mick made this. He's a, um, awesome. Uh, been with our team the longest. Um, uh, he does uh, user research and um, is head of product. Um, and, uh, also is, is, does a lot of our artwork, which I love. Um, so he actually, he, he, he <laughs> made this with a combination of Figma and Spline. Um, and so the artist would be up here talking about it. And, and as, as the artist is talking about it, you know, what we found is like, you know, people are enjoying hearing part of the experience or, you know, uh, as they're enjoying it, um, they, they tend to want to react about enjoying it. And so they start hitting those Ross. So if you want to hit that raw, this is cool. Yeah. So, I, so, so just for, for the context, me hitting this raw, raw, right. What yeah. does that actually provide? Does that, what does that actually provide in the context of this token right now or this NFT? So what that, what that will be for the uh, NFT owner is, is, is claimable money from, from the event cash flow in the future. Got you. So the and more, so if the you more raw, you, you, you can hit that thing once or multiple times. You, you can hit it. You can rapid fire. Sweet. Cool. And okay. so, um, and so, what we're doing with there is again, we're trying to activate the people who don't have ETH, don't have ETH, or just they're not trying to buy this art. 
right? Like it's still exactly. I love that because you're still engaging that high percentage of people who just want to hang out. Yeah. 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 After this event, you can scroll up on the Alpha Raw channel. You can see what it looks like for an auction. There's this, uh, uh, on the right side, there's, there's endless activity that you'll see. Yeah. Right here. Um, yeah. 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 Um, of like memes and gifs and emojis. People, when they're at these things, um, are reacting in all sorts of different ways. Right. 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 Um, uh, and so, um, uh, so the, the bidding, the bidding is going on. Um, you're currently the highest bidder. Um, uh, the, the bidding slowed, slowing. And so let's, let's, uh, let's, let's start closing this thing down. Okay. Um, I'm going to start the countdown. I love it. I love how fast it is. And this is, this is all connected to the bot, right? That's what's fueling, uh, this interface we have pulled up here on the, on the yeah. website. Okay. Yeah. And, and so for those of you who don't see the screen, um, uh, the, the Rara social bot, bot, a wallet now has a, a little uh, a tool that's showing a countdown happening um, along with the, the bot is throwing in uh, 15 seconds, 10 seconds, um, uh, 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 five seconds, and then one second, three seconds, three, two, one. Sold. <laughs> this, is, um, this is so had, dope. Had, had somebody else bid, that 30 seconds would have started again. Got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and for you, you're the winner. Um, all you need to do is confirm that transaction. And when you're confirming that transaction, what's happening on the back end is we're sending an offer to the artist's owner on OpenSea. Oh, um, wow, so okay. This, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so all that bidding occurs off-chain. Like, we don't want, we don't want people to be um, constrained by speed or Ethereum um, for gas reasons and signing reasons and auction reasons. Like, right. if I were to go... I, again, I love Azor and I love uh, Foundation. I love a lot of these things. Um, if you want to bid on most of these things, you got to pay all the gas to bid. Um, and so um, not only does this art need to be worth more than the gas, but every time you bid, you're just adding to the total amount you're going to spend. right? And so the, the social wallet, um, all the bidding occurs off-chain in the wallet and in the Discord. Um, uh, uh, with the final winner being the person who broadcast the transaction to the, to, to the, art, to the artist or the owner. Right. Um, uh, and so the, the Rara Social Wallet really requires, um, effectively, it's you, tr uh, seller or artist coordination. Um, they need to be involved at the event um, and, and willing to sell the art to the winner at the auction. And so had there been a reserve on this item on OpenSea, um, the, the starting price actually would have been the reserve price. Gotcha. Um, that makes sense. Uh, but, but the way it works is, is they log into OpenSea and they just accept your offer, um, which Mick, when he wakes up, uh, he'll accept that offer and your NFT will be in your Rara social wallet. <laughs> cool. So this, uh, this is amazing. So for further context, again, because again, not everyone understands, will understand exactly what's happening right now. Yeah. But we'll have the video, so that's going to give great context. Now, I'm looking at it. If I click 86 raw, because that's what I have left, I can see that it's pulled up, you know, Ra Ra's in the lap plus token on my account, order submitted. So I've seen it all go through, which is great. Um, yeah. When the order gets submitted in the morning or, or whenever it does, my token will now live in this wallet, correct? Yep. Now, yep. if I wanted to transfer that token somewhere else to showcase it or whatever. Yeah. Totally, totally open, yeah. right? Totally fine. Cool, yeah. I love it. So I love that you guys are connecting and kind of making anything possible. Yeah. to to the user yeah yeah the the the, the you know the 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 nft uh, and and auction space is the is the area that we believe is the most ripe for super social experiences but this is just the beginning um uh, there are all sorts of of assets again the central land and identity um, related assets that are incredibly important for us um and incredibly important for for crypto um so in the future like we don't have profile photos we have nfts um, we don't have uh, wallet addresses. We have .eth addresses. Right. Um, uh, 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 and, and if I'm inside of crypto voxels, I don't just have this random blob. I've dressed it in my NFT clothes. To do all of those things, you need a wallet first. Yeah. Um, but that wallet, like if you, if, you know, I don't know what wallet you use, but, you know, most of the wallets are very finance transactional um, uh, in nature. It's, it's always about the price. It's always about like uh, trade um, or earn, um, and it's really missing the the use. Um, Ra Ra is really about trying to get people to use these things, 
Um, uh, and so the raw button is a good example of getting people to use these things Absolutely. besides just um, purely transactional in nature. Um, uh, but where we believe it's going and where we, where we want the raw, raw social wallet to go is, is really like, let's, let's get off the game of just always buy, lo- buy lo- low, sell high to full on culture. Let's go have fun on the internet. Let's go do some cool things and express ourselves in ways we weren't able to express ourselves Absolutely. And, and find deeper ways to kind of connect and engage. I, uh, I love what you guys have built. And again, I know this is early and I know there's, Maybe after this, you can show me what the next stage of the yeah. UI will look like because I would love to see that. But even personally, just like as someone who runs a brand and is getting into this world and trying to introduce our fans to understand what's coming and educate them on this, the fact that we could plug in with the Rara Social and collab with you guys and have you guys a part of what we're building and to do things live like this, I, th- I think personally is game changing because even though I only saw a small glimpse of the experience with a few people, I can only imagine if you have hundreds of people in their music of good vibes, you know, and all bidding and sending raws, you're creating an absolute cult experience, you know, yeah. which I, which I love. Yeah. Um, so me personally, yeah. I'm just really excited to see where you guys take this and how this builds out over the next yeah. X amount of years. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I've always loved throwing parties. <laughs> um, uh, my wife and I actually got married during COVID and did a full blown zoom wedding which um, <laughs> uh, on the sounds of it sounds like a very uncool experience. Um, but uh, all of our friends had hangovers and had an incredible time after our <laughs> party. Um, uh, you know, we can, we can have cool experiences online. And, and like for a long time, like living, living your life online or playing in video games um, or hanging out in Discord wasn't cool. And you know, rah, rah, we don't believe that's necessarily the case anymore. Um, we didn't think it was the case before, but um, we definitely now have the tools to create cooler experiences and deeper experiences and, um, and a vibe. You know, we're called Rah Rah House, the, the tagline. Um, so rah, rah dot social is our website. Rah, rah dot house is our community. Yep. Uh, we call it a house because uh, we like to say we're playing with house party size events. Um, uh, you know, and the tagline is uh, Rah Rah House, one house party at a time. Um, uh, and, uh, we, we think there's something really powerful with that. Um, and you know, there's something about a house party that you kind of all, you kind of remember most of them, oh, right? Yeah. Except oh, maybe yeah. at the end of the night, maybe you forget the end, but <laughs> there's something special about going to a house party versus going to like, I don't know, some other ra- random club. And so, um, deeper connection, deeper connection, I think is, is probably the thing that happens at a house party. Yeah, man. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're, we're playing with that and, and, you know, I'll briefly kind of share my screen. Sure. Um, um, uh, over here, um, uh, oh, yeah. this, oh yeah, there we go. This is, this will be our upgraded, uh, 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 auction screen, um, which we updated there. Um, this is our raw button right here. Um, bid button right here, highest bidder and everything. Um, yeah, this, so this, this is cool, a lot very, more beautiful, which obviously you guys know, and I love the look of it already. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pop, I'll pop back a few screens. So this is kind of what we're playing with. These cool. are going to be kind of be animated kind of like almost like a lava lamp. Yeah. Um, very cl- club very party feeling, uh, similar to kind of rah, rah house. It's kind of definitely needs to have a vibe, um, right up until you get to the art, you know, the art, once, once the art's there, you know, you kind of have to go pretty simple. It either needs to be white or kind of a solid color color because the art is what needs to shine there. And so you'll see here. And then when you jump into the art screens, it kind of, it starts to become a little more gallery esque. So you can really observe and take in the art by itself without rah, rah, really kind of like putting itself on, 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 on them. Right. Um, and so this is where we're going. Again, um, uh, we actually just had our release with Seed Club. Um, we have the Seed Club after party, um, I think two weeks ago yep. now, or a week and a half ago. Um, and um, uh, a week from this Wednesday, um, we will be uh, live and ready to start um, being integrated into other Discords and Telegrams. And the, uh, the first collab party we're actually going to throw with is with RNG. Um, so random number generator, um, maybe I shouldn't be announcing this, but, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're announcing their community probably today or, or very okay, soon. No so worries. when this is out, it'll probably time up. Yep. Um, RNG is doing an RNG vault auction and they're going to use the rah, rah social wallet and be the first people, um, out, you know, besides seed club out live and being able to throw their own auctions in their, in their, in their discord with their community, with their own art. Um, and, uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, uh, you know, I think doing it in their communities gives them the opportunity to, um, 
you know, be a cultural center, um, which is what, again, what will make community tokens valuable is being a center for culture. Um, and so uh, we're, we're excited to launch, you know, launch with them and excited to be out and be able to start integrating with other you know, like telegrams and discords. Yeah, man. Look, I'm just want to say straight up, like I said you seven times already, I'm super excited for this. I think you guys have something like extremely re- cool here and I think it's only going to take off. So I even personally, I, I can't wait till you guys do have that functionality to where we could try to in- integrate in our discord and start mm-hmm. testing these things and start seeing like how our community reacts and start learning more about how do we get, you know, the biggest pain point is for us is like, you know, we're a global basketball brand and that that's cool. That's great. But 99% of our audience, you know, doesn't know crypto, doesn't know blockchain NFTs. They don't have a, a meta mask or any type of wallet. Yeah. So for us, like, you know, we want to keep educating, but like, and get, get wallets into the hands of our consumers and then be able to elevate the experience to, Hey, come hang out with me, Dev and all the founders, good music and, and do this and interact with everyone live, I think is just, is amazing. So I'll digress there. I've given, you yeah. know, I'll digress yeah, there. Dude, but we're, we're, we're stoked, man. Send me, send me the uh, uh, server invite. Loved it. Loved I will it send it to you. I want you to check it out um, and, and, and be a part. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of cool stuff you could do there. Um, yeah. uh, especially when you start playing around with, I think, I think the future of fashion brands will be IRL and digital. hundred percent. So, uh, you, you know, I, I'm sure you're doing this, you know, uh, a digital sneaker drop along with, yeah, game. man, if you bought, if you bought a, a high enough one, you get an IRL one. Um, Dude, we're taking, we're taking similar wavelengths, man. And, and I love it. Um, yeah. so look, I want to, I want to thank you again. This was just over an hour, which, which I love. You gave a tremendous amount of insight into everything robber house and just the entire NFT and crypto world in general. So I appreciate that. Appreciate you sharing that yeah, with man. us. Yeah, man. Thanks I'm, sure I'm excited awesome. to get this video edited up as fast as we can and throw it up so that we can introduce this to more people um, and let people see kind of like what's coming up next. So for me is someone who's like, you know, in the NFT world and really experimenting and trying to absorb and learn as much as I can. I'm just most excited for individuals like you and your team and seeing, because there's so many capabilities, right? Potential is endless. So like I want to meet people like you who are building these things that could have crazy legs and potential, you know, as everything builds up for the NFT and crypto world. So yeah, I want to thank you. I want to give a big shout out to your team. I know we didn't get to bring anyone else on, but I know there's some guys in the background like Azim. So thank you guys. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. We, we had a crowd. We had about five, six. I think people kind of come. Yeah. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's yeah. There's um, there's there's six people in the crowd. So um, yeah, much love to everyone. Are, only two of those are team members. So that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's pretty good, man. Much um, love to everyone. Well, so seven. This is Zeem. Zeem's up on the stage. Yeah. So um, that's pretty sick. <laughs> I love it, man. So yeah, I, uh, what I want to do is I want to try this. Absolutely. I want to end it on with you here and just one more time, just let everyone know where to find Rara, how can they interact, how can they engage and I'll, we'll end it there. Yeah. So our website is rara.social um, and you can sign up for updates there with your the email um, or if you want to come out to some parties, uh, we throw Alpha Ra um, events every Friday night, um, 10 p.m. London time, 6 p.m. New York City um, and 3 p.m. on the West Coast. Um, uh, rara.house is how you find us there. Um, you can also for the, uh, uh, for the emoji literate people in the crowd, um, you can, t- you can type in derelict emoji.fm. So the derelict house, <laughs> um, okay. uh, you know, the, the one that like needs, like it's got like boards on the window. <laughs> uh, that was the Zeme's idea. That's, that's our emoji domain for uh, rara house. So oh, that's you, cool. Uh, that's really cool. Derelict house.fm. Um, or on Twitter, we are rara underscore social and I'm L W S N baker on twitter um this has been awesome uh man uh now i've like totally stoked you uh invited us after this i'm oh. really glad we were able to, to put this together and came up with this idea uh enjoy your nft um as uh mick will confirm that for you that'll be in your wallet to to have forever um uh and uh super excited to um hear the podcast when it comes out and and, and check out the discord likewise thank you brother and excited i'm just excited to see what you guys are doing in the future so just keep building and once people see this, I hope we'll get a lot more people into this rah house and into this new culture you guys are building. Yeah, man. Rah-rah. <laughs>